Good, how are you? I'm great, thanks. Uh, Sydney Brunson, Mercury Broadcast Team, season three for me, season 20 for you. Yeah. As you look forward to this season, what excites you the most? Oh, well, I mean, um, you know, that's the beauty of starting a new season. Um, there's this energy uh, of how far this team can go, how much we can cultivate uh, a new way of playing that we want. Um, and just being in the gym for the last week, uh, there's this thing about this team that could be really special. Um, but the only way to do that is obviously to get in the gym and, and to work. And uh, that's one thing this team doesn't have a problem doing, which is refreshing. Elio? Hey, Diana. Good to see you again. Elio on Dubai, Sports 360AZ. So we just talked about the excitement going into it, looking forward. Just looking back just for a moment, when you think of year 20 and think of the journey to this point, what comes to mind? Um, just really lucky, to be honest. Um, you know, to be able to play my whole career here in, in Phoenix um, has really been a, a dream come true. And you only get perspective when you take a step back and you get to really think about the journey here. Um, you know, when I got here in 2004, I'd never been to the desert before, I'd never been to Phoenix before. Um, I really didn't know much about the city, the people, the basketball culture here. Obviously, I watched the Suns a lot because I was a Laker fan. Um, and I always knew there was something special here. And, um, you know, I've just been truly lucky to be here my whole career. Paul? Diana, how are you? Good, good to see you. You too. Uh, Paul Richardson with the sports game. Just one word. Why? You've accomplished so much. You've done so much. you iconic. You're known as a goat. Why, why again? Um, probably because I don't play for any of that. I play because I love the game. Um, I love to prepare. I love to compete. Um, I love to come into a training camp in my 20th year and still try to prove myself to my teammates and my coaches. Um, because um, I think after 20 years, um, there's still more to learn about the game of basketball. Um, Hopefully there's still more championships to bring here to Phoenix. Um, all those things. Trevor? Hey Diana, Trevor Booth with Desert Wave Media. Um, we saw you in Book's signature shoe commercial. Yeah. Um, can you just talk about your relationship with him and then from when you watched the Suns this year, if yeah. at all, what kind of limited them from accomplishing what they set up here? I mean, Book is just a special human being. Um, you know, when he, we got here, he was just a teenager. Um, and I thought he was 35 already. <laughs> he has this maturity, this seriousness, this work ethic um, about him that is unmatched by any other player I've ever been around, female or male. Um, and to see him get his own shoe this year is pretty special. Because um, he's done it all, um, in, obviously here in Phoenix, but you know, we look at the last couple years, going to the finals, being the best team in the, in the NBA. If you rewind seven, eight years ago, I mean, he was going, he was going through it. And for him to stick through that and, and to get to this side of it, I'm just really proud of him. Um, and you know, as far as the Suns this year, um, you don't get to win it every year. Uh, that's just the nature of the beast when it comes to sports. Um, you have to have a lot of luck. You have to have a lot of things go for you. Um, you have to have a, a certain mentality as a group um, to be able to win a championship. And you might have that mentality. You might have all the, the pieces of the puzzle and still not win it. Um, but I think the beauty of what you saw about that team is um, no matter what happened through the year, they were always there for, for each other one way or another. And uh, that's something as, uh, you know, as a Suns fan, a Phoenician, for our city, something we can look forward to for next year. Alec? Alex and Wayne Burn City Sports. So obviously you guys added Kalea Copper and Natasha Cloud. Just what kind of elements do they bring to the team and the energy that they can bring? Yeah, other than them being from Philly, which isn't the greatest thing. <laughs> um, I mean, 
I don't think we've added two players that change our program as much as Tosh and, and Kai have already. Um, I think Coach talked about Natasha a little bit, um, and there's not a lot of people that change everything about your team the minute they stop, step into the gym without even touching the basketball. Her energy, her competitive fire, the way she treats people, um, the way she cares about every single individual on the team, um, it's all the things that, that make you a great player. Um, and on the court, she just is going to bring this competitive um, spirit to both ends of the court. Um, and it's going to raise the level of everyone on the court. Um, and then Ka is just special. Um, at her size, in our league, there's not many people that can do what she can do. Obviously, we, we saw that firsthand in the finals when she was MVP, and, and we lost them when she was with Chicago. And um, when there was just a little glimpse of maybe her being able to, to come to Phoenix, um, there was no doubt that if we could get her here, for now and for the next 10 years, uh, Cop is a special, special player. Barry? Hey, how are you? I'm Barry Bloom from Sportico. Nice to meet you. Um, what do you think about the coming of Caitlin Clark and some of the new talent coming into the league? I've seen some dissonant quotes about it from coaches and other players in the league about them, Caitlin especially, having to merge her way into the league and, and not usurp the other players who've been here for so long. What was, what, what was the question? The question was, what do you think about the integration of yeah. Caitlin and those newer players coming into the league? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, our league is now what, almost 30 years old, so it's nothing new under the sun, as you would probably know. <laughs> More than anyone else in here. <laughs> You know, look, there's been a, you know a lot of talk about the, the rookies coming in, which has been amazing. Um, you know, I've been able to see them play now for four years, um, and what they were able to do in college was really truly amazing. And uh, you know, I think it speaks to where we are, um, you know, in women's sports, in women's basketball, the coverage, um, and you know, and like anyone that loves the WNBA, we want that momentum to carry on to, to whatever team they're on. And uh, you're going to see that in Indiana, obviously, with Caitlin and, you know, Chicago with Angel and, you know, Cam in L.A. I mean, they've been able to tap into um, a different side of, of the media. And um, this new generation uh, really does uh, carry a lot of weight when it comes to, I think they call it the social platforms. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, it's been incredible to see that, that momentum. Are you on Instagram? <laughs> Look at you. I'll take it back. No, I'm in, on Instagram, I'm on so, uh, Twitter, X. X, Twitter, yeah. And I'm on Facebook. Yeah. I, mean, I have to do all these things. That's a, that's but this is my, to your point, though, this is my 49th year covering base basketball and baseball and men's sports. See, I'm with you. I'm with the OGs, not the IG. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate uh, it. Brendan? And I am Brendan Clean. Um, you've been asked about it a couple different times, but just we've heard Sue and Candace talk about those later years and just the, the measuring of how do I know, when will I know, those types of things. Yep. And this contract year and another Olympics coming up, are you taking it one year at a time? Do you, do you have a plan beyond this year? Yeah, I'm taking it one day at a time. <laughs> Every day I stretch, I'm like, okay, I can go today. Um, and I joke with BG all the time. <laughs> But she's like, why don't you ever take a day? I was like, the, the day I take a day off, you'll never see me again. Um, I just still love to prepare. I love to compete. Can I talk about next year? No. Um, I'm just, at this point in my career, I'm 41. I'm realistic. I prepare for what's coming in the near future. And for me right now, that's, you know, game one in Vegas. And, you know, I'll go from there. But, yeah, I, I have thoughts about it. Jeff? Hi. Um, you were played with Christy Tolliver in Russia. Yeah. Now she's on the staff here. Can you just talk about what she's bringing to the staff and, and just maybe your relationship with her? And then also, what does it mean to you to have the charter flights? You know? Yeah. I mean, KT has just uh, been a, a great addition to, to the staff. Um, obviously, 
uh, both Fiji and I played with, with Christy in Russia for, for many years. And the one thing I always um, admired about Christy was how level-headed she was throughout any circumstance, um, whether it was in-game, out-of-game. And I think for her, um, just having that experience with the Mavericks and really investing in herself, uh, I think says a lot about her. Um, and just having her around, it's nice to have someone you know you've been you know, in the trenches with and we know how she prepares. And just the little bit I've seen in training camp, she's a big time coach. Chrissy has a great future in coaching if that's the route she wants to go in. She has uh, a mind for the offensive side of the game. Um, she sees it a little bit different and uh, it's been really refreshing to be around her. Um, and she's just gonna continue to grow and, 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 and really uh, relish the challenge of, of, of being on the staff.